All right, now it is time to bring in David Terachuk. It's time for the Media Beat. David joins us on a Friday morning. We rebroadcast uh, David on the weekend. Also, uh, next week during the noontime hour, uh, has its own website, themediabeat.us. He's also a PBS uh, television correspondent reporting on ethics and belief, and we love to have him join us every week. Uh, good morning, David. Good to be uh, to be back with you, Marshall. It's uh, a cool, coolish day in New York City, the media capital of the world, from where I'm reporting into you. I was uh, down there on Tuesday, and the car thermometer re- registered 102 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> on yeah, maybe we're past the worst. Yeah, but, I was... uh, that that's that, that, that's a risky thing to say, of course, because. Uh, uh, the weather is entirely unpredictable here, as it is just about everywhere else. As you know, I was in Europe for much of the earlier part of the summer, and uh, gosh, the, the heat waves there were something to be believed. Oh. Um, and New York's had its share, too, as you noticed. All right. Uh, well, you know, something that concerns me as a person that has a business that relies on other businesses underwriting and other people donating to us, I look on both sides of the Atlantic and I see... Uh, international trade really uh, being stymied. Uh, the United States and China, uh, this this trade war is not stopping anytime soon, and it is affecting the global economy. You have the big, big uh, Brexit exit possibly coming up on Halloween, uh, and all this going into the last quarter of the year is a scary thing to look at worldwide. Scary is um, is pretty much the word that a lot of business people would reach for right now. Uh, yesterday was a case in point. Uh, in many ways, um, the statistics uh, for America, the state of Amer- the American economy right now are, are encouraging. Um, we will be getting, uh, we speak now, just slightly ahead of... Uh, uh, the Labor Department's monthly report coming out, and uh, jobs are, uh, it's extraordinary thing to say these days, but uh, uh, unemployment is now at a 50-year low, uh, and yet yesterday also had the most uh, uh, extraordinary shudder of the, of the markets, the stock market especially, uh, when Trump, of course, uh, it's usually Trump <laughs> who does this, uh, sort of stirs the pot and, and, and throws a, a monkey wrench in the works, perhaps, is a, a better metaphor for it, when he announced the, uh, the, the threat of uh, yet more and yet higher, possibly, uh, tariffs against uh, Chinese goods. Um, uh, an extraordinary size of uh, the target. Uh, you know, billions of, uh, of dollars involved, uh, and instantly, of course, the market the market plummeted. Uh, in many ways, the, the business community, although they don't, they don't like this being pointed out, are essentially doing rather well out of the Trump years, uh, as they you know as they aggregate into years. We're going towards the fourth year. Um, and uh, it's all it's often very you know you can point to certain very rosy things in, in the economy generally but then it's <laughs> the, the regime is so erratic at the same time uh, that of course nervousness is is just part and parcel of that uh, of that financial scene now uh, and yes uh, you know overall uh, you we, if we you know, move outside of the, the scope of just the United States. Um, yes, uh, Brexit threatens to uh, to do extraordinary things, um, and and we have no real way of no real no real way of calculating uh, exactly what uh, ways uh, or the degree of the ways in which uh, uh, international trade generally will be affected. Um, Britain's so desperate now to negotiate a one-on-one um, trade deal with the United States and you know good luck to them yeah. in negotiating with this uh, White House and the trade representative that uh, the, that uh, the, the, the Trump is uh, dominant uh, has, has doing his 
dirty work in the in the tariff wars for him, um, the Brits can't really expect to get a, a good deal out of that. And what kind of what kind of impact that has on on the trading world generally is very hard to say. But it's not, it's just not looking good. And I, I think you're right to be concerned. You know, will you add to the fact that the Fed, for the first time in history, in an economy that was heating up. Is going to it, it's it's minor, but it's it's it, they're still going to uh, raise the interest rates by a quarter of a point, and even that sent the stock market down because that is also a hidden indicator of a trouble on the horizons. It's, sure, it's 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 an amazing uh, situation that we're in. But now I have to ask you, I didn't watch it. I saw clips after it. Uh, what is your impression now after we've had? Uh, four Democratic debates, actually two, but uh, two, you know, two two-night uh, debate events, where uh, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren did not take the bait and did not attack one another uh, on the first debate, uh, but Joe Biden, Camilla Harris, Cory Booker, and everybody took the bait and got into just uh, a, a, a circle firing uh, match uh, that that did nobody any good, is in my opinion. Sure, it was uh, there was a lot of dogfighting going on, but that that's what you get when you get twenty people running for the same office uh, or the same candidacy. Um, I, as a media commentator, which is my prime role, um, I'm just appalled at uh, the debate format. Uh, mm -hmm. It is uh, Andrew Yang, possibly one of the most impressive guys out of the uh, twenty. Um, uh, I'm not a politician, an entrepreneur. Um, he he and uh, Marianne Williamson are, are having an interesting uh, impact uh, as as non politicians in this lineup. But but Yang himself said uh, that it was just some gigantic reality show. And of course he's right. I mean, uh, I, I hate using the word myself, reality show, because the one thing a reality show is is not is any reflection of reality what it was a reflection of is, is sport as as grand uh, grandiose i should say entertainment um the 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 vast set for instance that cnn had built for this uh, uh, event you know occupying a huge 18 wheeler truck <laughs> as it made its way to detroit for the for the event um, it, it, the whole thing is so appalling uh, in terms of being the very opposite of what I think the nation wants and needs, which is a cool-headed uh, approach to some very, very serious problems. Uh, and what you had in the setting, the, the approach, the, the moderator's uh, framing of the questions, uh, what you had is, is just this gladiatorial mess. Uh, as of course you would have if you had 10 people on the stage at a time. Uh, and no, I mean, it, it defies logic and it defies belief in a way that we could have gotten ourselves to a point where uh, the media would be complicit. In fact, uh, the taking the lead in cheapening and, and uh, really uh, trashing the, the, the true nature of political debate with these so-called, I mean, these, these events are apologies for debate. The, the last thing they are uh, is debates. There, um, and, I, and I think the media is greatly to be blamed. Well, you know, you're, you're so right there. When I was in high school, we had a debate club. Uh, uh, Future Farmers of America, the FFA program, has an incredible uh, debate uh, learning program. Uh, also, Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, and when you look at these, I, I will not call them debates because they aren't debates. Uh, there's no there's no debate rules, really, that they follow except giving people an opening statement. After that, it becomes the Wild West. And everybody, you know, when you look at the end of two hours and you see that the uh, certain speakers got 10 minutes. Wow, they got 10 minutes in two hours. And half of the, the, the 10 people on each get five five to six minutes in two hours. You can't. You know, you can't accomplish anything with people getting five to six minutes of speaking time and other people just getting 10 minutes of speaking time. It's, you know, it's, I don't know what the answer is, but it's not these fake debates. It really isn't. The Washington Post's um, um, public editor is, is the term that is often used. It's kind of the ombudsman person who uh, 
writes about uh, the craft of the newspaper itself and, and in a sense represents the reader. Um, she, she's been uh, sounding off very thoughtfully about this. Uh, she, she has some interesting uh, suggestions. One of them is to, for a start, do away with these opening statements, uh, which is a complete waste of time, just, a, <clears throat> just an opportunity for people to posture. Uh, and, and, and it's it's a it's a, a kind of a nod towards the idea that that, that there are uh, platforms uh, from each of these individuals to to uh, to operate from. But of course, once they're said, uh, nobody takes any notice of them. So you may as well not just not have them. You may as well go straight into uh, straightforward uh, questions, not not the gotcha questioning, which is uh, has become the the prescribed method now. It was it was that way with NBC. It was that way with it has been that way with Fox. Uh, and, and of course, the the tendency is that the when you adopt that format, this is a this is a matter of fact when it comes to journalism, especially broadcast journalism, is that uh, uh, in this context, uh, questions from the moderators are, are not journalistic questions. They are they are the forms of questions that are meant to represent the the opposition. Uh, so it's as if, yeah. <laughs> well, as someone said quite easily, quite quite obviously, you know, every question sounds like a Republican talking point, um, and th that's inevitable. That's in inevitable given this this whole approach, and and uh, you know I I, I think that uh, just dividing up the people into into separate sections and, and uh, having having ten people on one show uh, is a is a inevitable recipe. Uh, for chaos. Uh, my favorite part, and Joe pointed it out to me because I didn't see it, but I watched it the next day, is when Bernie Sanders, in one of his answers, uh, criticized CNN because you're probably going to be running uh, a health care ad that's against Medicare for all in this debate. And, and, and Anderson Cooper tried to shut him down. And and sure enough, about twenty minutes later in the debate, they he was right. They ran an ad against Medicare for all. Yep. The, the well, thing that just baffles me. Revealing. Yeah, revealing. But the thing that just absolutely baffles me is that this was, th this was designed by, for, and something. What, what is it? By, for, the echo chamber. Because anyone. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, but, but yeah, th that, yeah. That's, that's what, so, and so now walking around navel gazing about it, it's, 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 it I, I find the whole thing, and I'm, I'm just mortified, but it's, if whoever is designing this and whoever designed this program and what I would really love to see the media on because the only only ones I'm really noticing it from is Politico I'd really like to see the 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 massive dumpster fire that is the DCCC I'd love someone to report on that because uh -huh. in the it you know in this context it probably people people who get 7 emails a day from 20 different candidates uh, asking for their money should really have a, a, a quick moment to see how that money is being spent. And when the head of the DNC, not to be confused with the DCCC, sends uh, frantic emails out saying, we can't let Trump's lead, his financing lead, get any bigger. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. And, and this this absolute detachment you know unfortunately or fortunately marshall and i spend every day down here in the regular functioning when i say function or dysfunctioning world where there where where, where the 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 fat of the land is you know has not exactly uh you know, trickled down meaning that there are a lot of people who have legitimate life difficulties that many, 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 many people have as well. And the absolute, I don't know, just, just the, the, the thickness of the people who should be um, connecting with it is, right. is mind-boggling. Well, a, a couple of election cycles ago, we, we passed the billion-dollar mark for uh, the American presidential election campaign, the 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 kind of uh, price ticket that 
for, uh, for entry into the game now is so appalling. Uh, and such a contrast with, as you say, uh, regular people's own sense of, of what a budget is. Um, uh, the, the, the money involved in these races now is beggars belief. Uh, and yet here it is. And as you say, uh, fundraisers are banging the drum and saying, we've got to, we've got to build up more. We, we need a bigger war chest, a bigger, an even bigger war chest. And this is the way that American politics are conducted now. And, and I'm afraid to say many other countries are going in the same direction. And uh, have, because it's, a, it's an industry. And that's absolutely and so many people benefit from it. And, and of course, you know, at, at, you know, not quite at the heart of it, but one essential point about that whole process is that the media uh, companies themselves benefit hugely out of that. And, and I, I know this is something that concerns you too, that, that local television in particular uh, has a vested interest in every election that comes along, in the hyping of the of the uh, the, the the razzmatazz element of it, um, and, and because of course the the income from uh, from uh, advertising, whether <laughs> whether it's for propagandizing in the healthcare field or whatever it is, it, it goes through the roof, and these are great money making times uh, for broadcasting stations. Uh, Sadly, not local. Sadly, not local public radio. But, but you know, I have... oh yeah, of course not. No, no, no that, that's the whole point. This is a commercial for none of them. Right. Uh, and, and America gets what America appears to want, which is a commercialized political scene. You know what I have always been against, and I'm 66, and I've been in broadcasting since I was 16. 16, uh, and, and well, I've been employed. Uh, as an actual profession since basically I was a little over 18. Uh, and I've always said through all the years uh, in the you United States. You always were precocious. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 it took me until I was 19 to get into the business. <laughs> I, I just, I just. <laughs> Sorry, that's, I interrupted. That's <laughs> really funny. I, yeah, but I've just always said that radio stations in the United States are licensed by the by the government. Uh, you don't own the license. You own a business that applies for the license, and you are the license holder. And because you are the license holder, I've always thought that any TV station that is regulated by the FCC, any radio station that is regulated by the FCC, should not be allowed to charge for political advertising. As long as you are a actual candidate with the party, independent, or you're running a writing campaign that can prove that you're registered with the state uh, that you're running in, uh, you should be given free airtime, and everybody should be given the same chance uh, uh, to, to get that free airtime. Um, that would do a whole lot to take uh, this money out of out of politics, and and what well, an extraordinary, simple, uh, and bold, uh, but elementary. Uh, yeah. Proposal. I mean, it's. <laughs> I mean, it's. It's. it's, but it's uh, but, we have. We have so-called commercialized the business of television, of, of, of politics in television, and, and to, to a lesser degree, radio. You know, but commercial radio is, is, is prospering too out of this whole uh, circus going on. Uh, but it, the whole the whole idea of, of, of money ruling. This whole process is, is has gotten us into the mess that, that we are in. Here's here's the big joke, David. Every TV station and every radio station that's licensed every quarter has to list in their public file uh, programming that they've done for the public good. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What do they send in? <laughs> Those pages are getting slimmer and slimmer. Slim, well, I, I, it reminds me of my expense well, I, reports when I first went to work. I know what we send in. I mean, we have, we we have lots of local programs, but. It, just imagine if, 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 if the political segment was included in that and every radio station like around here if people were running, uh, every uh, gave 15 to 20 minutes to every legal candidate. First of all, you'd have programming that people would listen to, whether you're an AM station or not, because they would listen to that. Uh, and it would, it would work the same way on the national level as well. It's, it's just gotten so out of control. And there's so much money now involved in politics. There's no incentive to there's fix no it. There's no incentive to fix it or to try to change it at all. And the, uh, Absolutely not. And we're, then we're, when, we're a talk, an aspire, a yeah. very, very fast and, and tight talk. You're right. But what's also incredibly frustrating around the whole thing is 
these, I mean, all right, so great. 20 Democrats have been primarying now for what? I, 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 I mean, this has been going on for I don't know, every day for how many months? For, forever, right? Like, like every day we're supposed to check and see who's doing what. Uh, in the last debate, thank you, CNN, and I mean, NBC's wasn't much. <laughs> NBC's was pretty bad. Uh, but CNN's was, I mean, you can call this a format, but this was just a really uh, 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 amateur version of America's Got Talent. And <laughs> that, yeah, you got it. Yeah. And, and that somebody actually signed off on it. it was it, It's just, you Here know, you this is kind of right. Okay, so you guys are in this too. You've got your agenda, your slip. People know what a slip is anymore. Your slip showing. You know, how am I meant to take you seriously? And unfortunately, um, you know, the, the, the me types just go, you throw up hands and just don't watch. Marshall watches baseball. But it, it's, it's most people are getting their information still from this. And there's an entire generation, apparently, who believes that this is how it's meant to be. Like, not not... There's no critical thinking happening, and it's just bad. Well, there, there yeah. is critical. Well, let me let me just quote directly because I it just popped up on my screen a, a quote from the man I was just talking about, the entrepreneur Andrew Yang, uh, way out on the on the on the uh, on, on in the wings almost of the uh, second debate. Um, I'm sorry, the first debate of the two of this week. Uh, Andrew Yang actually put it very pithily, I think. He said, instead of talking about automation and our future, including the fact that we automated away 4 million manufacturing jobs, hundreds of thousands right here in Michigan, we're up here with makeup on our faces and our rehearsed attack lines playing roles in this reality TV show. It's one reason why we elected a reality TV star as our president. You know, that's such a true statement. And when you look at, if you look at the coverage of, I'll, I'll say Bernie Sanders, Andrew Yang, and 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 uh, um, uh, Elizabeth Warren, um, they basically stick to talking about their programs. And people say, oh, they're just giving the old campaign line. No, they're giving that. That's what candidates should do: give their ideas over and over and over and ad nauseum again, until somebody starts paying attention to it. Because those are the policies, and, and people think that when when people ah, give, yes, and, and hopefully react to some pre, you know some probing questions about them, which that's, is, of course is not what they get. They that, get they get they they they, <laughs> they get the sort of roust about that, that happened in you know in in Bernie's case. And with, if, uh, but, the whole idea of but the, uh, you know the, the, the Medicare into the, the the healthcare insurance industry uh, attacking him and uh, well uh, you know devolved right. into Elizabeth, that Elizabeth, about the, the advertising. Elizabeth Warren said it best, basically indicating all these ideas. If you're going to run for president and you're not going to present new ideas that are a starting point, then why are you bother running? Because the for yeah, exactly. That's correct. But this format is not the right one to no. say that. And it's I an also, impossible one right. for, the, for, for any engagement with ideas. Well, when, when, particularly when the moderators are they're trying to start a food fight. If yep. and, and moderator quote quote that moderator moderate forget that. <laughs> yeah, um, last thing they're doing is moderating. But yeah. my favorite is I guess so this this was in the, the green place. room. Yeah. I guess the 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 the, the, the pre uh, what is, the the pre pre game instructions were the minute, <laughs> the minute that someone starts saying something say thank you senator your time's up and move on to the next you, you know if you actually go back and run the film of this. Anytime anyone began to answer a question, they got cut off. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's just, to a, a man. it's just, a, it's, but it, it, hopefully, hopefully they'll get down to 10 to 10 or 11. I want to hear from time. seven of them. I don't, you know I know, I know, but you, 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 if they've begun the process and they've got to whittle down a process now, because if not, 
Uh, the Democratic National Committee will look even worse than they did that uh, four years ago. So they've they've got to go through the process now, but they have to stick by their what they want to do and whittle it down so it gets down to as many people as possible. They've, less. In, in they've already months. they've like the seven people who have qualified or eight people, and you're only going to get two more. You're going to have the same problem because the same core people that it just it's like it. That's I guess on top of everything. Really stupid because the game is fixed. Somebody said, and I forget what newspaper said, basically what the Democratic National Committee is afraid to do is to say, okay, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Joe Biden, Andrew Yang, to name five people and say, you know what? It's We're the Democratic National Committee. Uh, we think that you know, you you five or six people have the best choice. That's it. And we'll start off with five or six and then we'll whittle that down. You mean you've got the best down. shot, right? Yeah, you've, you've got the best shot. But that, that but, but that that horse is long, long, long out of the barn. Yeah, but they've also got a you – know, well, there's, there's the you're, – you're right about that. There's also another problem, which is, um, bluntly, th- th- no, nobody's cheerful. So, you know, you basically... It's not, it's not meant to be a cheerful event, a debate. A debate's meant to be serious. Yeah, I'm not talking about a debate. Cheerful in this context. Uh, I'm not talking and, about and, a debate. I'm talking about, you know, it's, it's no, no you but... Can't, you can't be cheerful in the, in the way they've got it set it up because... I'm not talking about the way that it's set up. I'm talking making a much broader statement, which is you need some people with some energy and enthusiasm and a little bit of positivity because it's really, if that's even a word, because it's really difficult to get up every day and put your yoke on and go crawling into a miserable world. I'm sorry. I would uh, recommend to you one particular journalist, uh, an opinion journalist, uh, approach to this whole thing. Uh, David Brooks of the New York Times, a Republican, but I guess uh, a kind of Republican that's fast disappearing. Uh, and he is actually making an appeal to Democrats. He's saying what we need here is is not so much a political fight. This is in his column today. Um, not so much a political fight as a cultural fight. What what he what he feels the country needs is an uprising of decency. I'm not a huge fan of David Brooks, but I think he's got his finger on something here. Uh, that's what's needed, an uprising of decency. I got you. Uprising and Marion Williamson. All right. Thank you very much, David Tereschuk, The Media Beat. Thank you. And you can hear David, of course, every uh, Friday morning here on Robin Hood Radio, rebroadcast on the weekend and the following week.